All right, I had to make a quick video because I decided to finally test this helmet. And we're testing uh, Melanie's new selfie stick situation that we uh, that we put on her bike. So here's the helmet. I don't even know if you can see it because it's so bright outside, but uh, I got my scene on there and this will be about the second or third time that I actually have worn it, but I'm actually gonna ride in it versus just putting it on and testing it, so. I got uh, my camera and stuff, so on the booster. So or noisy or quiet this helmet is as a street helmet, because I think this is more track inspired, so we'll see. And like I said, I'll be out with the missus. All right, let's test this helmet. And I'm testing this against my Bell Raystar and my AGV Pesta. So I have many, many, many miles logged on those helmets. So we'll see how this one works out. All right, so this is, uh, I got my boy over here. Cartel calls him Le, Le, what, LeBron. <laughs> then I got my lady. So we are setting up so we could do a legit review. This is behind the scenes, should I add this into it? And the backdrop for this is going to be Sophia, my wife's S1000. And um, we even tried to mimic a wind tunnel but instead we will be using a turbo fan <laughs> that's, the, that's the one with the um with the um the, the water softener listen they're gonna give a give us an extra discount because now i gotta come out of pocket to go buy this water softener so i chose the bell race of course, this is about the RS10 or R10. We got the Pista and then the KYT. And so uh, this is supposed to be a carbon fiber. I mean, all of these are carbon fiber. So we will get into the nitty gritty. We decided to do it outside with some cigars and beers because uh, why not? And this is going to be a no BS um, review. So. Enjoy. All right, so we are about to make a review of the Alpine Star, but we have several other helmets here just to compare it. So I got my boy with me, Donnell. What up? And um, we have been discussing these helmets, the pros, the cons, and the differences, and we're gonna try our best to kind of show you guys. Really, this is all about the Alpine Star R10, but Again, so let's get to it. Move the camera in closer so we got some, that's the most light we have, right? Yeah, something like that. All right, All right so the first thing we're gonna discuss is vision. vision. Now, you'll probably see in the video, whether I put it in the beginning or the end, I'm not sure how I'm gonna edit this yet, but um, Donnell actually got on one of the bikes and he wore each individual helmet. Yep. And so talk about your vision. We can start with the Alpine Star. Uh, Alpine Star, um, I would rank it, how would I really want to rank it in comparison? Well, I just thought Alpine Star felt okay on my head. The vision um, right here, right here. <clears throat> First thing, if you see right here, I could see it. Okay, the sooner I put the helmet on, <clears throat> a lot of adjustments I have to make just to actually try to get it out of my peripheral, okay? So compared to having the clarity or having that, that, that clear sight compared to a bell helmet um, over here or an AGV helmet, um, I kind of, it's one of those things that's like, hey, where are you going up here? It, it almost make you have to look and be like, why are you up here? What is going on? Compared to any of these other helmets. I know a lot of folks out there are more familiar maybe with a bell helmet especially the drag racers they love those bells 
or the AGV for all the road race community, okay? Um, but with the Alpine, with this particular model, definitely this is something that I saw the soon I put the helmet on is one of those like wait do I have it on right was like who are you here why can I see you now the one thing that I want to add I'm a caveat off of that yep. this helmet is not size for Donnell so he That's just kind of sort of threw my helmet on um, one of the things I want to add as well is the pin lock that's in here. When I was testing this helmet, I had to adjust the helmet up just because you can see the pin lock and you could see um, the rib that's on the top of the shield. So that's one of those things. I, I don't know if I'm gonna have to put something in the helmet so I, it could stay stabilized because this is the size for this helmet. But um, unless you're a cone head or something, this helmet does fit very different from the Bell, the AGV, and then the KYT, but we'll get into that a little bit later. All right. So that's the vision for the Alpine Start. For the most part, I mean, it looks like you have a great deal of vision, but the reality is, as I said before, like it's, it's definitely, I don't know, maybe I should just put like a towel or something on the top of my head to keep it in place. But it's not, how do I put it? It's not that bad. It's, it's not that bad. All right. My cap. And it's crazy too, because it looks like you have all of this vision, but then yeah. some of the other helmets, I feel like, look at the this the side, the vision of the KYT. Like yeah. that is huge. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. You know, yeah. that's huge compared to that so at any rate we'll get into the fitment so how did it how did it fit compared to the others um like you said maybe it's not size for me um oh fitment i know how it fit on me fitment. Um, for me for you know i'm a smaller size guy um the kyt fit me the best yeah for it being a, a, a size that's not correct, the KYT actually fit the best. Um, then the Bell and the AGV. Like like the construction in that, especially the top leg you was talking about, mm -hmm. that, yeah. Now I think, I think with the Alpine Star, if you, which is kind of difficult to see, but if you look inside, look how thin that padding is on the top of the head. Oh, yeah. That's extremely yep. thin. Yep. Now all of the padding, especially the cheek pads, everything fits, but unless you, again, I alluded to being a cone head, yeah. maybe that's the reason my head is not like pointy at the top or something. Right. So that's why it's moving around. So I had to adjust it as I was in the top and crouching when I was testing it. I had to push up on the helmet so I could have a better field of view. Well, you see, I don't think that they'll be able to see it, but if you, if you have an R10 or you're looking into it, I know it's difficult to see, but if you look in there, let me see, I need some lighting. There we go. So you can barely, there you go. You can kind of see it. If you look in there, it's the material in there is extremely thin. It's very, very thin. Now look at this and then we'll compare that to how thick the bell the bell has some padding. You can see that, Donnell? Yeah, I can see it. The bell has some padding in there. And this does not move while it's on my head, even in while tucking. Even my AGV Pista, if you look in there, it has, it's a worn helmet, but the padding in there is pretty thick. So it can sit on top of your head and it won't move. And the KYT, even though this is like, I'm not going to say I hate the helmet because it's noisy, but this definitely will probably be a track. But even this has some really decent padding in there. So Alpine Star, like they, I don't know if that's for comfortability or what, but, um, and actually the, the KYT padding is actually pretty, I mean, it's thicker than what's going on in the Alpine Star, but it's still technically thin compared to the Bell and AGV. Now I'm trying to stay on task, so I got the list on my phone of what I want to talk about. 
Okay, so now we're gonna look into the construction and protection. So one of the things that I dislike about the the uh, Alpine Star is I was telling Donnell earlier, so if you look at the cheek pads, most all these other helmets have the cheek pad secured right here by some form of a snap or something. But on this, it just comes straight apart. So you can see how you can just pull it apart. It has snaps uh, at several locations on the cheek pad, but I don't know why, I don't know if this is like for the emergency pull or what, but there's just nothing here, which I find to be like crazy because the price point for this helmet is pretty, it's pretty expensive. So, well, I have more expensive helmets, so I guess it's really not that expensive, but um, that's one of the things that I dislike. The vision and the noise, and then it just seems like in some ways that the helmet, they did a lot of things right and then they got a couple of things wrong. Uh, the other thing would be, so when you get the helmet, you have this like aerodynamic, I don't know what is a chin protector deal that goes right here. I took it off and swapped it for this uh, chin skirt. And I'm assuming that it helps with noise, but that's just my point of view with it. If you look at something like the bell, the bell has snaps. You can't, it, it's secure. You see what I mean? The bell is like that. The, the AGV is like that. Everything is secure. Even the KYT is secured at the top with snaps. So I'm not sure why Alpine Star chose not to, why they chose not to secure it that way, but it is what it is. Now, what I will say, uh, the pro with the Alpine Star is airflow. Would you agree? Yeah. yeah. I mean, you can't, it, it, yeah, you're not gonna get hot in that. Um, well, let me just put it to the middle here. Work with us, work with us. I'm hoping that this helps one of y'all riders that, cause I've been getting a lot of questions and stuff over this uh, Alpine Star. So I figured I would make something for it. But um, so like you have the vents here, you know, they open and close. So you got the vents right here on the lower part of the helmet. And then you have uh, one up top, which I felt a lot of wind depending like up around my eyes as well. So. And that's probably why, because if you look, there's a bunch of uh, like vents up here at the top of the forehead. So I'm assuming that's why I felt all of that air. I did attempt to close this just to see while I was riding, just to see, because this helmet isn't as bad as the KYT. The KYT literally, like there's, that's, that's probably the helmet with the most airflow. But as it pertains to the this Alpine Star, I think they probably did a good mixture between track and street. Now, you'll see in the video, again, I don't know if I'm gonna put it at the beginning or the end, my partner in crime had our turbo fan in his face. <laughs> <laughs> and we were trying we yeah. were trying to act like that was a tunnel, right? Yep. Like a wind tunnel, yep. but it didn't work itself out that way. But we made it happen so he could see what was the loudest. And so, how does the Alpine Star compare to the rest of them? Well, the Alpine Star, well, the, let's start here. The KYT by far has been the loudest, okay? Mm -hmm. Once again, yes, airflow, there's a lot of air getting in there. If you're someone that might have some eye issues like myself, okay? Um, be mindful, um, okay? Or, or do your research before just buying a helmet because there is a lot of wind flow. If you forget or leave one of these vents open on top, all the air is going to come out, dry your eyes out. You're going to be kind of miserable, all right? You have to put in refreshed tears or something to get yourself back on, on task. Um, following that, then we have the Alpine, okay? Now, for those, it's, it's going to be summertime soon. Those that might be out there, you get from stoplight to stoplight, this beautiful helmet right here, I promise you, you're not going to be as hot as uh, whatever you might have been using before if this is the route that you choose to go all right this thing gives you plenty of air as well 
and you know you could close your vents off if you like mm -hmm. um and that'd be a big help but for those that want some airflow you're feeling a little hot you're not going as fast as you want to or you wait to go fast and it's still hot outside this is the perfect thing okay hey once again this is a beautiful helmet there's a lot of air coming in they designed that to keep you cool okay on these hot days it's funny because i thought these were like some form of a vent but i don't know what they do because i didn't feel anything like on my like i don't know what they do yeah um but yeah i well i, I would say if if anything all right i'm not listen i'm not no scientist okay i did not design this helmet but I would think when the air comes in, this kind of help push it out instead of just keeping it here and probably fogging it up. So, because right here you could you could feel it and see it, so the air will be able to come out and go around your helmet into these little side diffusers. Okay, maybe they know they was doing. Shout out to Alpine, which is crazy because this thing is not even really secure. It's not even attached to anything. It's yeah. just what is that it's supposed to be aerodynamics? Yeah, I would say for for side air keeping you stable. No, I don't know. Yeah. I'm not a Helmologist. One of these um, designers, let us know, okay? You yeah. can send us some helmets and we'll try them <laughs> off for you. Um, but, yeah, so when I tested the the, uh, the Alpine Star, for me, I think the loudest helmet here, like Donnell said, is that KYT. Mm -hmm. I mean, your eyes are going to water. I mean, if you like listening to music like me while you're riding, you're definitely you better have some really well-placed speakers because that thing is loud. I want to say these two are probably, the Bell is probably one of the quietest, I would say, and then goes the AGV, AGV. Yeah. then the Alpine Star, and then the KYT. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, like I, I don't wear this helmet a lot, but this is probably my favorite helmet out of all of them. Well, I mean, well, we technically have a lot of helmets. <laughs> what to say? <laughs> we got a lot of helmets and gear and stuff, but um, but yeah. So now we can get into oh yeah, music, music. So how did I hook this stuff up? How is it more difficult or easy to get to music? So with the Alpine Star, the one cool thing that they came up they came up with was like uh, I guess I would have to pull. I don't want to take the helmet apart, but. If, and it's hard to see. So what I'm gonna do is just, I'll just pull it so you can see it. So if you look back there, behind this cheesy looking suede thing, they actually have a place, indentations in the helmet where you can add your speakers. And then when you turn this thing up to max volume, you'll damn near go deaf. So I, I feel like if you're someone who listens to music and can't function without music like me, um, okay, yeah, that's not easy to push back in, but uh, that was the other thing. I, I hate it when I took this helmet apart to put it back together. Um, I thought it could be easier, but all good. So yeah, the speakers for this in this helmet was pretty, pretty decent because they have indentations for this. I want to say they had, let me see, where is my speakers? Yeah, they. so the bell has some indentations for it as well. Now, the KYT, I want to say, yeah, they even have holes in there. So they have a place for you to put your speakers also. So you can see the little holes. I don't know if you can catch it with the camera, but yeah, you, got it. Yeah, you can kind of see the speakers there. Yeah. The worst helmet here for street riding though, for music is the stupid doggone piston. Because you can see my ghetto-ness. I had to cut holes into the side so I can hear the music better. I know that's ghetto. You don't want to chop up a, you know, an $1,800, $2,000 helmet, but I had to because I couldn't hear the music. I didn't like it. so. And I'm sure other people do the same thing. And they do not provide indentations for speakers. It's all flat back there. All the other helmets do though. So. Now let's talk about what's next on our list. Wait. 
Oh, the shield lock. Shield. We'll get weight next. Yeah. Shield lock. So it takes some getting used to if you have several different helmets. I will say the Alpine Star, it does take getting used to because you have this little locking mechanism down here. So it does lock very well. And you just have to push up on this, this and it takes some getting used to. Push it down. The only thing I don't like is you have to, I found myself having to grab it like this and pull down while I'm riding and then it locks in place. Unlike this, to lock it in place, you just, if there's a tab or something, so I don't have to pull down on it, I just, oh. That, oh. All right, Bell, that's about to be a con. <laughs> but when you're riding, you know, it's the same thing. You just kind of pull up on it and you're good to go. This, you gotta push up and then, you know, so I found that to be kind of different. The easiest helmets to open would probably be the KYT because even though this thing is, is, is expensive, all it has is just a little tab. It's the easiest, well, I can't do it one hand, but, uh, and you just open it up and it's good. Everybody knows the Pista is, is definitely easy because you just push a button and lift up. And I find this to be great just because you just push the button and you can actually open it halfway so you have some air. Whereas with these, you just kind of have to lift it and then leave it crack if you want more airflow. So, and the same thing for the Alpine Star. I think all in all though, once you get used to not switching back and forth between helmets, it just makes it easy. I just don't like the fact that I have to just pull down on it. But either way it goes, it locks is fine. So, all good. All right, so now we're gonna go into the weight. Now, which helmet do y'all think is the lightest? Well, I'm about to show you anyway, so it doesn't matter, but let's go. I got my little, what'd you call this, a fish hook? Yeah. It's 10 kilograms, so let's do it in pounds. So the first thing we're gonna do, I do have extra stuff on the helmet, my Cena, um, and then I got this chin mount on here, but either way it goes, I'm gonna just hook it up, and then we can see. So what does that say? I don't know. I can't see it. I mean, it goes. All right. So we at what's that? Three pounds. Three point five eight. This is on the Alpine. Three point five eight. Yep. Okay. So I can tell you holding it in my hand. I mean, it's not terribly light. I wouldn't say it's heavy either. It's just I don't know. Let's see. The bell does feel lighter, but let's see what the scale says. Maybe it's not. We are right at the same thing. <laughs> 3.58. What? Go. And the bell has some of the same stuff on it. We ain't gonna be at the same thing. This thing ain't changing. Amazon need to count their days. <laughs> well, we're gonna try it again. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna just turn it off and turn it on. Okay, yep. it's zeroed out. Yep. That's what I get for buying Amazon scales. Okay. It's already reading something. And I don't even have it hooked up to really anything, but okay. Oh, no, no, no. No, we gotta reset that. Hold on. What does it say? Wait, hold on. Let's reset it. Hold on. We gotta take it off and try again. Okay. All right, pre press the reset. I may, I may have to use my other scales, but we'll see. Okay. I don't want to do that. Get it home. Yeah, we're back at the same thing. 3.58. Oh, wait, hold on. No, 3.6. The bell is heavier. The bell is slightly heavier. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because when you hold it in your hand, it doesn't feel that way. Yeah. Okay. Let's try the... Now the pistol, this is gonna, I'm not even gonna bother weighing this just because I got all types of mounts. Like this feels, like I know this is heavier. KYT feels lighter though. Yeah, okay, we're gonna try this. Let me do this. Let's see if I actually, I have to turn it off and turn it back on anyway. 
this. No. Like you said, let me just turn it off, turn it on. I'm at to order another one of these. Okay. The KYT does feel lighter. Let's see where we at. Woo! KYT for the win when it comes to the weight. The weight, KYT wins, so I don't know. All the uh drag racers, street racers, whatever, roll racers. Um, and I'm not, like I said, I'm not even gonna bother doing this because I know this is probably the heaviest. Actually, you know what? I am gonna do it. Even though it's not legit, I'm still gonna do it. Just put that right there on this. Okay. I don't know what it says because I can't see. Uh, 4.03. Okay. So that's not that bad. I mean, I do, again, I have a bunch of extra stuff on it. Um, okay, well. So that's that. The people and wanna then, know, what do you think your lightest helmet is? Oh, I don't, probably, I don't know. Cause I have another, you have another KYT right here. I have another AGV over there yeah. that I wear a lot. So, yeah, and that doesn't feel that heavy. You got 200 AGVs over there? <laughs> hey. Yeah, you would think I would be biased, but I'm really not. You know, um, over, you know, we've had Icon, we've had, I don't have Shoei or, so what's the other one? Sumi or, yeah. you know, but I'm not the, I can't say that, gear person in the household. That's Melanie, that's, that's wifey, not me. If it was up to me, I have one helmet. Um, music. So the loudest helmet I have as it pertains to music has to be the KYT or the Alpine Star. Mm. Those are both like they're they're the placement of where like your speakers go is extremely loud. Like they're the only ones that make me have to turn the music down. These other two helmets. Nah, like, yeah, so. Um, so we went over vision, fitment, construction and protection. All of these are DOT approved. Um, I mean, they all have the same stamp on the back, basically. It's not Snell approved, but it's DOT. Uh, the one thing that I can say that I like how loud the, uh, cause I, like I said, I love music on my helmets. I like how loud it is, like my Cena, but at the same time, I don't know if you can see it, but the way that that Cena sits on the helmet is not per perfectly flush or flat. Like it's 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 like hanging on, not hanging on by a thread, but I mean, it's secure, but it's not sitting like the other helmets. And I think that's because aerodynamics, how they kind of did it. The rest of these helmets don't really have too many indentations into the, you see how it kind of goes in like that and it's not perfectly flat, whereas the bell is flat, you know? The AGV is flat. Obviously the KYT is flat. So maybe that's, that's some type of technology that they came up with. Hmm. But in a nutshell, I think this helmet is, what, $999, I think. So, would I personally buy this helmet? Yeah, I would. I mean, I don't think it's a, it's not really a perfect street helmet, but I think if you wanted to have this as a track helmet all day, this would be a badass helmet. I think for street, if you want max airflow, I think they, they gave up. I think they try to to go in the middle between track and street, so I think it makes a little bit of sense. And um, yeah, I I don't know. I think I'd, I don't really need any more testing. Um, 
you know, the videos that I'm going to show you of me testing the helmet. I put it through some some decent testing of the way that I ride. So, and for the most part, it fit decently, except within the tuck. And um, for normal everyday street riding, riding is it's okay. You know, track riding. Um, I had good vision while going through the curves and stuff, so it's all good. Anyways, enjoy the footage that I have of this, and um, I appreciate my man Donnell being a guinea pig, helping me out with this. And um, yeah, I think the Alpine Star is worth it. And there are other helmets on the market that that's that's probably better. So, all right. If you have any more questions, hit me up in the comments. Remember, like, share, subscribe, and we're gonna get back to our beer. Yeah. <laughs> Peace. I feel like I'm losing my mind. Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign, a sign. I feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world die? Please Lord give me a sign A sign I wanna be the greatest Everybody on the face shit I look around and feel like everybody is the fakest I make this every day and I'm impatient Hoping one day I blow up from the basement Statement, the top is so vacant I don't hear shit that I think is amazing Waiting for my day when I'm playing Sold out shows for a thousand faces Hey, give me that crown Get in my way and you'll be put down It ain't your place, all this my town If I want that shit then I'll get it